about what the size didn't cost for the equipment. Welcome to our engineering design showcase video. Our project is based on a retrofit of a dimethylcarbonate plant, and our team consists of Derek Wadsworth, John Davis, Brandon Burgeon, and myself, Rhys Gaia. We are all senior chemical engineering students taught by Dr. Palazoglu and Dr. Ellis. In this presentation, we will first outline how the CDWC and the RDSR work and how we have optimized them. Then we'll talk about what the sizing and costs for the equipment along with our assumptions when conducting a retrofit. Next, in the impact assessment, we will go into the environmental, health, safety, and social impacts. And finally, present an economic analysis and a, with a go or no-go decision. Our client is Organics RUS, located in Peculiar, Missouri, that currently produces 50 million kilograms per operating year of green dimethyl carbonate at 99.5 more percent purity. Conventional process uses a dividing wall column, referred to as a CDWC. The retrofit would remove this and use reactive distillation with a side reactor known as RDSR. Therefore, they have asked us to assess the feasibility and economic potential of implementing the retrofit of the process to use the new RDSR technology and produce, produce the same amount of impurity of DMC. The primary use of DMC is as a reaction intermediate in the production of PC, which is used as a structural material in electronic components. Another application is used as a fuel additive as an oxygenate in gasoline blending. Finally, as of 2009, DMC is no longer classified as a VOC. This declassification decreases the cost for utilizing DMC in several applications like water-based eco-friendly paints and coatings. The global market for DMC was 895 million in 2019 and expects to grow to 1.2 billion by 2024 with a compound annual growth rate of 6.2%. Asia currently leads the world with a global market share of 50%. This is mainly due to their high demand for electronic components made from PC. North America is the second largest market and is expected to have a CAGR of 3.32% over the next four years. Furthermore, the environmental and public health concerns regarding the use of outdated process technologies will further increase the demand for cleaner, more reliable, and efficient DMC production technologies. Before we dive into the CDWC and RDSR process, we'll first begin with an overview of the inputs and outputs into both processes. Being that both are direct synthesis processes of DMC from carbon dioxide and methanol, they both utilize the same carbon dioxide and methanol inputs, along with outputs of DMC and water as a waste. However, within the CDWC process, we utilized aniline assay and trainer to improve separation between methanol and DMC via extractive distillation. While within the RDSR process, ethylene oxide is utilized to react with water and thus reduce the amount of water within the reactor recycle streams and improve DMC equilibrium. Within this hydration reaction, ethylene oxide and water react to produce ethylene glycol, which is an additional valuable uh, byproduct. Now moving on, we will first discuss the CDWC process, and in particular, we've split it into two parts, beginning with the reactor and early separation section. This is summarized within figure two to the right, as you can see, methanol and carbon dioxide enter as fresh and recycled uh, feedstocks and are mixed and enter into the reactor one pack bed reactor where the direct synthesis reaction takes place at a conversion of 9.7 mole percent relative to methanol. The reactor effluent then exits and enters into the flasher where carbon dioxide is recycled via the overheads of the flasher stream while the bottoms of the flasher exit and enter into column one. Now column one is a standard uh, or conventional distillation column where uh, we are separated into our uh, overhead and bottom streams. Within the bottoms, the water that is produced within the reactor is largely removed, while within the overheads, uh, the remainder of our reactor effluent continues. The Distillate within the overhead is then separated via vapor and liquid distillate with the vapor distillate being recycled back to our uh, feed section. 
The liquid distillate, however, will continue on for uh, future separations and contains components containing methanol by 94.1% mole percentage. It has DMC at a mole percentage of 5.4% and carbon dioxide at a mole percent of 0.5%. And so the future separations will largely center around separating DMC and methanol. And as such, of course, uh, we will need to utilize a entrainer in order to overcome the azeotropic uh, limits of uh, methanol and DMC separation by boiling point. And so we introduce uh, aniline as a physical entrainer. And we do this into our process seen in figure three of a dividing wall column. Uh, we've shown the thermodynamic equivalent in which we've modeled the dividing, qual uh, dividing wall column via a thermodynamically equivalent uh, series of conventional distillation columns. The, this dividing wall column ultimately will, of course, produce three uh, individual streams. Uh, as you can see, the first stream, which is the overheads of DWCED, uh, possesses largely carbon dioxide and methanol and is uh, recycled back to the front of our feed section, while uh, the bottoms of DWCB uh, largely possesses our aniline recycle, which will be sent back to the front of the dividing wall column as uh, an entrainer, again, to improve our methanol and DMC separation. While the DWCSR, we have our liquid distillate, which contains our DMC product. Now the DMC product uh, has the following uh, components uh, in the following ratio seen in the bottom left table. We can see that DMC is at a mole purity of 99.51%. It has methanol by 0.46 mole percent and water by 0.03 mole percent. Now this of course meets our product purity spec of 99.5 mole percent and thus will serve as a baseline for our RDSR retrofit. The plant retrofit was similarly modeled in Aspen Plus version 10. This model utilized reactive distillation with side reactor technology. In this model, we reused the same packed bed reactor configuration for the DMC reaction. However, due to changes in component concentration, the conversion of this reactor is now only just over 3%. In this model, a reactive distillation column is fed pure streams of CO2, methanol, and ethylene oxide. In this column, ethylene oxide and water react to form ethylene glycol. The top stream from this column is split with one portion feeding the DMC reactor, the other portion being fed through a flash separation train and recycled back to the appropriate locations in the reactive column. The bottom stream from this column is comprised of approximately 50% DMC, 45% ethylene glycol, with the remaining balance being comprised of water and methanol. The bottoms of the reactive distillation column is further purified downstream into the desired component product streams using a series of conventional distillation columns and a decanter drum. Column two separates ethylene glycol at a 99.99% mole purity rate in its bottom stream, with the top stream being fed into column three which separates DMC at a 99.5% mole purity rate. The top stream from column three is fed into a decanter drum, from which a wastewater stream is drawn, comprised of 91% water, 2% DMC, and 7% methanol. This stream is fed into a wastewater treatment plant. The top stream from the decanter drum is fed back into column three, acting essentially as a, as a reflux. Although the risk of operator exposure to aniline is eliminated in the new retrofit design, ethylene oxide is introduced and with it, increased risk of operator exposure to chemicals as well as flammability concerns. Therefore, the retrofit will require increased levels of process safety controls. A number of regulations exist for the transport and use of ethylene oxide both at a federal and state level. Special care must be given during the detailed design phase to ensure compliance with these regulations from a standpoint of air emissions, chemical spill control, and waste stream treatment and disposal. Overall, 
this project design has a negative carbon footprint, which introduces a global environmental benefit of carbon sequestration, in addition to an economic incentive in the form of tax credits. The positive benefits of this project include local job creation in peculiar, increased demand of ethylene oxide, increased supply of ethylene glycol, as well as the previously mentioned CO2 sequestration benefits. This project comes with inherent risks of fire and explosions due to the use of ethylene oxide, chemical spills in, during the changeover and training of operators, as well as noise pollution during construction efforts. These risks must be mitigated during the detailed design phase. In addition, there are two location factors that must be considered. First, there are no major chemical operations or plants in Peculiar at this time. Therefore, the political climate of the local community should be assessed before moving forward with proposing this installation. In addition, Missouri building codes require increased safety factors due to extreme weather conditions. Now we're going to talk about the CDWC and RDSR process outputs and utilities. First, 15 million kilograms per year of dimethyl carbonate is produced per operating year with a 99.5 mole percent purity. On the other hand, the RDSR process produces the same amount and purity of DMC, but in addition to that, the byproduct ethylene glycol at 9.4 million kilograms per year at a 99.99 mole percent purity. On the right here, we have a table comparing the utility requirements for each of the processes. Uh, there are um, a megawatt duties for low pressure, medium pressure, and high pressure steam, as well as for cooling water, chilled water, and electricity. Notably, the CDWC process costs significantly more and has greater car equivalent carbon dioxide emissions than the RDSR process. Next, we're looking at the differential retrofit equipment pricing. So the one piece of equipment we retrofitted from the CDWC process was the condenser, was the first condenser from the CDWC column one. This, uh, they had similar areas and we were able to price it and save on costs. Uh, we also replaced all other equipment. The table on the right illustrates this and the total costs. Notably, the total inside battery limit is $5.8 million, while the outside battery limit is the storage tanks for ethylene glycol and ethylene oxide that, need, that were required to be added for the RDSR process, costing $333,000. Uh, one potential uh, place to save on costs is retrofitting uh, column one from the CDWC process. The packing cost uh, to replace the internals with catalyst is approximately $450,000 with the installation costs ranging between $270,000 and $405,000. However, there are other challenges, notably the diameter and height of the original column is slightly greater than, uh, the, than the reactive distillation column that will be used in the RDSR process. Next, here's a summary of the economic and, and implementation summary. So some key assumptions that were made during this analysis were that the plant operates 350 days a year. Also, uh, we assumed that mechanical design started on July 1st of 2021 and stopped on uh, after 20 years. Uh, we also assumed that the utility and raw material costs were static during our analysis. And lastly, that, all, uh, that no boilers or other utility producing uh, equipment was required because the utilities were significantly less for the RDSR process. This resulted in an outside differential outside battery limit of $333,000. Next, here's a summary of the important parameters from our analysis. So here the uh, incremental investment is the total capital investment, which is composed of the fixed capital investment and the working capital. This totaled $18.4 million. Uh, in the incremental yearly savings, which was the difference uh, between the profit, the revenue generated from ethylene glycol and the cost of differential cost of manufacturing. This resulted in $11.9 million worth of savings. And from these values, we we're able to calculate the incremental net present value of $83.2 million and a rate of return on the incremental investment of 65%. The investor's payback period is 1.54 years. On the right here, we have a diagram showing the sensitivity of the net present value, which is a proxy for the profitability of this process against the ethylene glycol sale price. Notably, a 10% change in the sales price results in roughly a 
10 million dollar change in the incremental net present value so our final conclusion and recommendation is that we should proceed with the retrofit based on a feasibility and economic uh, basis in terms of feasibility as was mentioned earlier the model converged and accurately uh, achieved the product and quality specifications in terms of economics uh, every uh, measure indicated that the process was highly profitable uh, some other considerations are that uh, there's still potential to salvage equipment and save on costs uh, with more accurate uh, approximations there's also uh, potential for a future tax credit because this is a net green process as shown on the table on the right, the difference between the emissions and the amount of carbon dioxide fed into this process uh, decreases and actually becomes negative, meaning that for the RDSR process, carbon dioxide is actually quote unquote absorbed and not as much as emitted. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We would be happy to answer any of your questions.